And today's topic of discussion is... <laughs> not exactly, not quite, not that kind of effects. We're not talking about spacecraft and lightning bolts and fire and flames. Michael Bay, gotta love Michael Bay. By the way, if you haven't seen that new movie, Edge of Tomorrow, check it out, awesome movie. With options, your entire strategy is based so in this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about FX or Forex. This is your FX Primer, and here on this channel, we keep it easy, fun, and fast. Might bring a smile to your face, actually enjoy the learning process, and yet you're able to understand something that was previously complex, now seems simple. Let's talk about effects, maybe. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and all the bad things, like leverage. Well, we'll talk about leverage. That's a double-edged sword. It's both a positive, it's a blessing, and a curse. Stay tuned to find out why. Promise not to sing anymore in this video? Well, I can't promise that. Forex. So let's go ahead and F-O-R-E-X. And then uh, also known as FX Foxtrot X-Ray. So what is FX all about? I'm going to surprise you right now. I'm going to let you know that you are actually probably already an FX trader. Because if you've ever gone to the bank to trade your currency, let's say you're going to Italy, very beautiful country, highly recommend it. You're gonna to go to Italy, you wanna change your US dollars. If you're coming from America, you wanna change US dollars to Euros to go to Italy. Well, guess what? You're basically kind of, in a way, participating in the FX market. I mean, what you're doing is essentially the core of what happens in the FX market. So the FX market is basically you're trading currencies. So with equities, you trade companies. Now, I, I know uh, this is oversimplified. I'm trying to make this in a format where everyone can understand. So basically, I'm trying to focus on concepts here. So you think about equities as you're trading companies. You get shares of ownership in a company, and in FX, it's like you trade countries. So what does that mean? The health of a company affects the stock price in equities market. The health of a country's economy affects the value of its currency, and therefore that's going to affect your exchange rates, and that's going to affect your FX trading. But essentially, again, with FX, you're trading currencies. So typically, when you look at an, an, a quote, when you look at an FX quote, you're going to see two currencies because with trading of currencies, obviously you're going from one currency to the next. You change your US dollars to euros, so there's euro on one side and there's US dollars on the other side. So let's look at a currency pair right now. So let's say we wanted to trade from, we want to get euros. So here is the symbol, and this is how things are written in FX. This is a symbology. So EUR representing euros, and then you put a slash like this, and on this side you put US dollars. So this is fundamental to your understanding of what FX is all about, is to understand the way that it is looked at in terms of pairs. So this is what, what's called a currency pair. Now, the way, the way you interpret this is essentially what you want here is you want euros. And this is what you have. So whenever you see this format, this is the target currency, and this is essentially what you have to convert. So I have US dollars, I want to get euros. So always look at it that way. So, and the proper terms is this is actually your counter currency, and this is your base currency. So how many US dollars will it take to get my target currency? I want 100 euros. So I have to pay a certain amount of US dollars to get that Euro, the, that euro amount. So that's the way it looks. So when you look at quotes and you see something like $1.38, for example, being a quote, that means it's going to be $1.38 US dollars to get one euro. And that essentially is the basis for the FX market in terms of the way you look at things. Now, before we get into more details, I want to break down some of, some of uh, what the FX market is all about. So what are the details in the, in the FX market, especially in, in, in contrast to the equities market? So let's go ahead. I'm going to put some notes on this board, and then we're going to go through them one by one. I know exactly what you're thinking. I'm a mind reader. You're looking at this, and you're saying, that looks like an eye, that looks like an open mouth, and that looks like some kind of teardrop. But you're wrong. This is actually 
my best representation of a globe representing the Earth, planet Earth, because Forex is international. You're trading currencies all over the world. Aussie dollars, Canadian dollars, Mexican dollars, yen, US dollars, euros, you name it. But let's go through the basics here. So first of all, where can you trade FX? So FX, unlike with equities, it's one market. You don't have New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and all this kind of stuff. It's just one market. And that also means that instead of looking at, let's say, New York Stock Exchange, 2,800 stocks listed on, on, on that exchange, here, you major, you majorly, you're mostly looking at what we call majors. The majors are the major currency pairs. Remember, FX is all about currency pairs because it's all about exchanges, right? You're changing from one currency to another. So in order to have uh, uh, something to trade, you need two currencies. And the main ones are, are from the main economies around the world. So you have those main pairs, which are called the majors. And we'll go over those majors in a little bit. So the next thing is when can you trade you can trade 24 hours a day five days a week so you want to neglect your family and your kids you want to be trading effects at 3 a.m. in the morning go right ahead trade all day trade all night no problem and one of the reasons why you can do that I'm actually gonna skip here is because you have an extremely high amount of liquidity the liquidity in the FX market is tremendous compared to that of the equities market so in comparison let's say potentially five trillion five with a T five trillion a day in the FX market compared to a little tiny little bit uh, let's say four billion with the equities market. Four billion shares a day with the equities market potentially compared to the five trillion. And just to give you a little perspective here, and we're going to jump to size. What's the difference in the size of the FX market to the equities market? Well, let's just say that this represents the entire equities market. Are you ready for this? If that's the entire equities market, then this is the FX market. Wrong. That would be incorrect. If this dot represents the equities market, then this circle is too small to represent the FX market. The FX market is about 600 times that of the equities market, so this circle would have to be much larger. Or another way to look at it is this dot here is three times too big. The, the, to put this in scale, to put this in an accurate scale, this dot is actually three times bigger than it needs to be. And the way I can determine that is because I know that on this board, I can only draw about 220 dots. In order for me to properly do this to scale, I would need to draw 600 dots. So that tells me right there that this dot is way too big to represent the scale. Another way to look at it, just to give you a little some, something so you can understand the scale of what we're talking about here, is if this is your loud mouth uh, three-year-old, let me give him a head instead of a dot for a head, that's better, there you go. If that's your three-year-old representing the equities market, then this tall building represents the new World Trade Center, which is built to a height of 1776, 1776 feet. So if this was the equities market, then this is the FX market in comparison as far as scale. Now, obviously, this three-year-old is actually a giant. That's actually not a good represent representation when you're talking about scale. It'd have to be much smaller. But the point is, you know the difference between a three-year-old child and the World Trade Center, so you can understand the scale between the two markets. So now let's talk about cost. The cost with the FX market is much lower than that of equities. Equities, you have these huge commissions and all this kind of stuff. You don't pay as much when you're trading FX, so it's much cheaper than equities. As far as risk, risks, well, your biggest risk with FX is potentially going to be the leverage, the blessing and the curse of FX. You can command a tremendous amount of leverage in the FX market. Now, let's say in the equities market, maybe you have like a 50% margin account set up where you, know, you can actually put in, let's say you put in $500 and you actually have $1,000 of buying power. If that's the case in equities, then here with the FX market, you could look at something like 100 to 1 
up to 100 to 1. Now, it depends on which institution you're trading with and some other factors, but leverage can be that high, 100 to 1. That means you can multiply your money tremendously. In terms of buying power, we're not talking about actual cash in your account, but in terms of actual buying power, which is the money that you're able to trade with within certain limitations. You may have a minimum margin requirement. So, for example, uh, let's say on $1,000 cash in your account, Based on your margin requirements, maybe you have to maintain a minimum of $200 balance on your account. So that's just for example. That $1,000 could be translated to $10,000 in actual buying power where you can actually trade um, and not $10,000, but uh, you still have that limitation of that minimum margin requirement. So let's just say you can trade up to $10,000 minus that $200. Now don't take these literally. I just want you to understand the concepts, get the basic idea of how this works. The basic concepts are there. For the details, we'll need to get a little bit more advanced than this particular video is. But that is one of the big advantages with FX is you have huge amounts of leverage and you need it because unlike with equities where you have these massive fluctuations in prices, the movements here are very, very small. In fact, the movements here are actually the way we look at movement here is in pips, which is percentage in point. So with the percentage in point, depending on the currency pair, you're looking at a fourth decimal place movement, for example. So let's say we have like a dollar thirty-eight six and then two representing the pip. So when this goes up to three, goes up to four, goes down to one, goes down to zero, that would be your pip movement depending on the the currency that you're actually referring to. So when you're looking at price movements in the FX market, you're looking at very, very small and subtle changes. Therefore, you actually need to command a high level of buying power. You need to be trading a huge amount of, of currencies to actually make something profitable. Unlike, again, with equities, where you could have a massive fluctuation in price, where you can make a lot of money real quick with not that that much of investment, depending on the stock and the stock price, of course. But with FX, generally, you're looking at very, very small movements, so therefore you want to have a lot of shares, or not shares, you want to have a lot of currency, you want to trade a lot of money or currency in order to make any kind of uh, sizable profits. So that's something to consider. The other thing is, the uh, we talked about the size of the market, we talked about the like, liquidity, liquidity is very high, you can trade anytime you want to, there's always liquidity, Is always pretty much you can buy, uh, sell anytime you want to and those are ba those are the basics pretty much of the FX market so we're gonna go into a little bit more details in part two of this video but I think pretty much we've covered all the basics all all the things that you need to know about effects but you're probably wondering things like how do I trade currencies that I don't own like I have US dollars in my account and I want to trade a currency that doesn't have any a currency period that doesn't have any US dollars in it how does that work exactly you can find out that in part two of this video this video is just again a primer an introduction into the market so you can understand exactly what effects is and the lingo doesn't confuse you anymore and now you are an effect effects expert. You know everything you need to know about effects, at least to start. So the next thing is for you to investigate further and learn further, learn the details. We just talked about the concepts in this video, but you need to learn about the details. How do margin accounts work? How do you actually trade? How does the accounting work? And I'll talk about some of that stuff in future videos, but you also need to go out and do your own research as well. I'm just helping to get you started, helping to get rid of that intimidation factor. Now you can go with confidence. So you are watching Carlisle Speaks Wall Street, and that has been my FX Primer as requested by my subscribers. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Don't forget to thumbs up the video, share it, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And you're thinking this sounds an awful lot like swaps. Well, swaps or interest rate swaps. It's something different. You can actually click on that box and there's going to be a little line that's going to show up and you can click and drag it and as you drag it up and down the price scale, you're going to see the price change. So that's uh, instead of entering manually a limit price, you can enter it that way. And of course, you'll see on this range, it'll be like, you know, say $2 here, $3. It wouldn't really go that high, but just to give an example. So you have